So high level, the relative is relative to the time by particle and the delta value is and from the larger than from the bottom of the system I will now then just speak about pathway and the So, very clear statement. Some changes along the way. Currently, not at all looks very good, but then I just pointed out that changes are in the process of 15 and 18. And the book has to be done, so I can't do anything about it. So this workshop is like after TV and Jenny, I think you should take care of by Professor Vilas and pretty much export into it. Uh, I will try to touch uh, on the idea of on, on the application of generative AI with a bit more focus on something called as RNG. Okay, so RNG is uh, pretty deep. We are approaching the problem statement right now. We are just in terms of applying relevance into some practical use cases. So let's understand what it is. Uh, this is something that this is the main I was talking about. Uh, by the end of the session, all of us will be able to pretty much be an expert in LLM and know what it is, how it works, and everything. But then I thought, no, this is not what it is. Pretty much what is going to happen is that you will just say there, there itself that you are right now. But you know uh, what this field is all about. You will probably even appreciate the developments happening around you in the TVI. And, uh, Probably start building a product of your own or get some direction into it. You're already building something in it. So, you know, origin. Okay. Uh, and I think it might help me work clearly uh, audible of it potentially. Uh, a brief about me uh, that's precisely how I would like to put it across and then I will get into the AI intro that is here. Uh, the basics and uh, technically, when it comes to AI, uh, a lot of people uh, across a lot of countries uh, will be an expert and can be that. In some very brilliant minds. Then, as a field, it's pretty much evolving and it's a continuous learning process. And I'm definitely not one of those experts, but I can give you the basics that's what I'm going to share today. Uh, right now, on the path, previously I've uh, been in this coming for AI and I've been in the community of data science, I can learn from the then. Then, this is the coach for a while, uh, and then I got to manage company, so that two logos along with it. But nonetheless, and that's my Twitter handle in case somebody's kind enough to go and check it out there. Then, I'm, it's my the product. Uh, a brief intro of pathway. Uh, so, pathway, by the way, uh, whenever we do these sessions or any kind of these engagements, a lot of confusion happens that okay, it's probably an attack. The last, the first thing I would clarify is that we are not talking about attack. Uh, we are precisely, uh, I mean, the, the research company, it's a French company, the office in France, the French in the US. Uh, essentially, pathway is a, a team data processing engine. It's a unified framework for both batch, for batch streaming and LLM application. Okay, uh, and uh, the question I would like to ask here is how many know what streaming is, by the way? Your fan? Yeah, live streaming, there is one question of it. I mean, one, one yes. Cool. And I think Professor Vilash is looking around because that's what his area of, uh, I think that's where he has found his latest uh, around the profession. But uh, if I have to, you know, quickly summarize what streaming is, we suddenly have a very in depth session about it. But the way I like to describe it is like, let's say you are a college student, there are two ways to wash your clothes. Okay. One thing is that uh, as soon as it's getting dirty, you are washing it then and there. Uh, the moment it, it, the clothes is dirty, you are washing it. The second option is that you are putting all of it in a bag and then washing it by the end of the week. Uh, typically, the second one means a bit more easier, and most of us are in the second zone, right? We are creating a batch of clothes. And that is what happens in the realm of data processing as well. Uh, most of the experience uh, today, they are working on batch processing. They will create a batch of data and then do some transformation for the thing is where you are uh, processing the data as it comes. It's like enabling the machine to learn the way the humans do that is in real time. You don't know, create a batch of different things and then learn, right? So, uh, what happens is the process framework for making this happen, and uh, it happens in uh, technology is built on top of means. It's built using just workflows, a pretty efficient one, but it's go by Python. You don't need to know uh, 
just to be able to use a path check. You are very, very good on uh, path check. Actually, uh, building something using Rust, uh, all you need to know is Python. Uh, the two links there is basically one of them is a GitHub repo uh, of the main path engine. You can scan that if you would like to and start it if you're trying to do so. And the second one is for the LLM uh, template. Basically, it's a set of examples that showcases that you can simply leverage to build an LLM or uh, retrieval automated generation application of your phone. Okay. Um, I think we are scanning silently for the repo. And then I will be um, I definitely need to thank these three people because, um, like most folks here, I have uh, not so much on time. And the work done by these people was also really helpful in me putting this up. So, Google is an old friend. He was, I got Google is a software thing, I got it running from the beginning of this thing. But still, so Google was a developer advocate at Pathway. Um, and then, Google here, who is very relevant in this field, it is PhD. Around KNS, for those of you who are, uh, in this field, they would know what KNS is and why it's so relevant. Um, and then Jan Chonathu, the CD of Pathway, um, he basically worked at Google Brain, Mila AI, he worked very closely with Yosha and you and Jeffrey Hinton. Um, and uh, these two folks are also apparently called as Godfathers of AI. I initially used to find it very, very uh, funny that, okay, the Godfather is very Chinese, it sounds a bit Chinese, who is calling them Godfathers of AI. But it's a thing that most folks call uh, them. And, uh, all of them have made very significant contributions. Uh, you might be, if you're active on something like Twitter, you might have seen Jan Lake on the show. Uh, Benzio was on Google, uh, he was one of the pioneers of the game, Google Network, and Joe Hinton was one who was in the thing. I think it was okay, maybe getting the order. So, still, you know, I can get right. So, this is the name given, I think, but let's skip it. Sorry. Um, so, um, this particular session, you guys, there are two components to it. First is LNM Maps, two finger techniques. Let's let's start by dissecting this into two parts. First, the LNM maps, the second thing, second thing is real time media. Um, you'll understand why we are talking about the second one. I mean, is it just because part is in this field or is some actual uh, technical or uh, tactical implementation of it? If you're trying to build a startup, if you're trying to build like a company, if you're hired as a user or as a good um, So, first of all, a very basic question. Uh, I think we all would know right, what LNM is. I wouldn't. Do a random show of hands there because I know everybody would raise their hand. But in case you do not know, uh, this is a photo uh, you can see that to me and behind this company called Gopin, right, which is uh, the maker of uh, so the GPT in that GPT is the LLM behind this LLM application as we call it. And this application, like all of us must have used it in multiple things and things. In fact, uh, it's looking across uh, the description of the YouTube that is right now going on, use that GPT. Strategy and every step on today's day, and very, very fundamental uh, in the application that is here. Why? Because typically, this particular model they have been able to do a lot of things. And uh, initially, there used to be a lot, lot of models for various purposes. Then there became this event of large battle models. So, they had about a massive volume of data, um, including uh, information about text, videos, images, and right now, we have something called as MLM, that is multimodal. Large language right now, for example, on the activity, you can ask that to be the application itself um, to maybe you know create a random image of what is doing a handstand, okay, and it will be able to do a job if I will be very data not, but still you get the point. And this particular model can do a lot of things, it can do a function extraction, description, volume, uh, summarization, um, translation, you know the drill. Essentially, at the point in time, there used to be individual models for these things, but you know, simplifying condensing into one particular step made uh, the life easier. In a summary, there are four advantages that we can you know, look at. I mean, it can go as long as one might want to take it. But in a way, this um, advantage of LLMs over neural networks, traditional neural networks, and in across four domains. First one is the care of data. What the obvious thing is that the large language models have a large amount of carrying data on which it is trained. Definitely made them a bit more powerful over others. This was also supplemented with the kind of computer power that we've seen later. Uh, then, the second thing is transfer learning and ease of prototyping. I just bucket it into uh, the same thing. Transfer learning is like, let's say, um, you know how to play cricket, and then like, you feel that, okay, I can probably grab baseball also very quickly because, okay, by the way, I don't know baseball. Um, but still, you 
because you you might have the definition that fundamentals are more or less the same. You have the same thing in the direction and all those things. So similarly, I mean, if you look at as learn on certain set of things, and now it can apply it across domains. Foundation uh, understanding very important. For example, if you ask uh, scientifically or anything, um, there's this example. Like for example, what is the color pattern? And we even there's a color pattern is yellow, red, green, something like that. Then I'm like, no, I'm talking about the company that makes macros. They like, oh, it comes in apple, gray, silver. It's not a particular point. So it gives those answers. Uh, why? Because then this is contextual understanding that takes in. Similarly, another example would be bank. Bank can mean a financial bank. It can be the They understand the context very well, which is why they are a bit more uh, efficient. And they are used across multi, you know, base modes of tasks. That's why. It's also very commonly used in prototyping. Let's say I am working at a top notch company and I want to use LLMs many times just because I feel that this one I won't build an application or can simply take an LLM of this shell, build an application, see if it is actually something about the customer. Whether the leadership is liking it or not. Then this is that we can go for more and more complex stuff. We can take a look at the We can take a specific model, we can add more complex things to it, more But this is picking it off the shelf LLM makes the life easier. If you are going to work fast, which is very important in community. So, this is interesting, very, very superficial way of understanding how it lives work. But this actually is correct to an extent. So, Mumbai Tar is from this movie, very recently from five hundred years ago. But let's say you ask Mumbai Tar is in which uh, state of India. So, how does an element work in Sufi understand that? So, this is very obvious thing. It's a, it's a model, right? It's an AI model. It will work with numbers, it doesn't work with text. So first of all, you would have to break this sentence into, you know, kind of a smaller components, and then do the components of numbers, and you can do the computation on top of it and give the output. What happens is, let's say you are entering this particular prompt that tells me where is this thing. So what it will do first of all is it's something called a token, which will break this into token. Token is nothing but a set of words and numbers with a semantic meaning attached to it. So once it is broken into tokens. Um, it helps in that sentence because it is easy for you to complete more. Um, but imagine this has a group of proteins. All of this is in this case all together into the last time. And the model has a single job to do, a single task. The task is to edit the next best word given the context. Let's say Mumbai Tan is sitting in the country. I mean, let's say it comes up with this. The output is Mumbai Tan is sitting in the country. Then it will ingest all of that again into the element. So let's say in the country of India or US. Or United States of India, whatever it is, it is not by that. So let's say this way, it is basically generating an output, and then all of that there is a component called as B tokenizer, which will then stitch all of this together and give this an output. The key thing to note here is uh, all of this works on something called as a trans very popular transformation architecture, which we are also covering and we are trying to cover the boot camp that we're doing with books at that club. Um, but that definitely dive into it, but for now, I think this is a good enough way to understand that um, this is what an is doing. Now, talking about industry impact, I think it's it's, uh, it's a very good way to maybe quote a random big company like the KDG and BCG, and then simply put a number to it because that becomes very trustworthy. So another from McKinsey says that the value that the AI could have is something like two point six billion to two point four billion uh, annually. That's an insane amount of value. Where is value related to work? Is it just uh, all of you in this particular lecture are all using chat to teach us where this value is coming from? Maybe not. We'll understand where it is coming from. Uh, but there are certain challenges that companies are facing right now. They have to work with data by ensuring that very critical yet uh, supremely critical thing to deal with for any company. They have to deal with extensive manual effort. They have to force talent. They have to work with something called as training and real time method indexing. What this is, we will understand if I can accept it. And observability, I mean, you're using it. observability as the name says, it's about observing things in a very simple manner. You're using something in a production and saying, observe how to do it. These challenges they exist. So let's do, let, let's take two very simple examples to understand what we're talking about. Let's say uh, one of you, let's say Aditya here is the CEO of Netflix. Okay. Uh, and Aditya wants to understand, tell me how are my numbers performing in the region of New Delhi. Thank you. Thank you. So now, almost a question, right? Because you know, there is a very interesting report that came from McKinsey. So there is state of AI impact, something like that. Report that they published. Significant that significant that 
significant portion of uh, the 30 40 percent. Uh, percent of dealership folks at Fortune 100, Fortune 100 companies, they use using generated AI on day to day basis. Okay, now let's imagine how the tail is here that anything wants to know, tell me how is the user retention metrics growing. Or in the customer, the customer has a customer product data, meaning a customer product data, and he wants to simply know that tell me there's this bug that our developers are facing by using our API. I don't know if they have an API. Let's assume they do. Okay, and uh, tell me how to solve it. And the product, I mean, as developers, they could continuously work on it and update the documentation, right? But this is the answer that means, uh, the question that means an answer. The rather than may change with time because the documentation will change, the sales numbers will change, and it is definitely not in the training data of ChatGPT. It's a very common use case. You can take this in a, in a setting of customer support, you can take this in a setting of, uh, let's say, even uh, sales, marketing. It's a very common use case. It can also be around um, innovation in many cases. But yeah. Second example is, let's say, Amazon. Mintra actually believes a very cool thing. I don't know if it's still in India, but they launched something called Mintra. Mintra um, let's say you are a developer at Amazon and you have to build this particular tool where a user can simply go on to that tool and ask you, uh, tell, give me like, the printers that went or a discount for the past one week. Okay. If, you, if you go to chat, uh, if you go to chat and read today, it will not give you the answer. Okay. Because if you simply ask them, can you find a discount for this week? What it has to do? You go and say, I'm sorry, but I don't have real time. Give me the details of what you're Right now, there is something called it. Can, uh, it can do a Google search in parallel and give some options. Imagine it's happening within Amazon interface. You don't have a way to make it happen. So, these two um, kind of problems should give you this content that GPT itself, or it is GPT, I'm not being specific or attached to the name, very British of me. So, uh, but uh, you can always attach to the In the sense that these models, they excel at the equation, but only from their training data. Or if it's fine, you can again, it's a uh, different case. But then, if you take it off the official foundation model, model we call them many times, they do not know uh, the recent events that are happening on a particular date. This September will be particular, and I don't know if it's really cut off date. This term for it is called cut off date, basically the point after which it has been not have any view at all. It does not know access, you know, it does not know uh, any information from any non public document. For example, if you want to ask about the documentations around uh, customer support, around say, let's say I'm a sales executive, I want to know that okay, this guy is asking this question, how do you answer? That's a non public document. Information from past conversations, I mean, if I'm asking something and my friend Shlok is asking something, they both will have to ask the question and it will have to do the company back and take that same out. It has, and it, is, it has no memory on the ability to forget also. Uh, forgetting is something that is again interesting also. Take that data, but real time data is not, for example, the Amazon. Imagine, right? The product catalog of Amazon is changing every second. The discounts, marketers are shitting on the back of their laptops and launching new schemes. The people are buying the products. But the, the catalog is changing continuously. So there's a problem there, and that's where the solution comes in. And that, that's where we're trying to put this second filter, which is around real time data. Now, by now, we should appreciate why we're talking about this entire time learning. In fact, it's very foundational to apply elements in our It can never usually, I mean, um, it is usually not applied in silos. You typically have to merge it and to make it happen. Now, traditionally, if you look at it, there are two very common ways. I mean, all of you would have heard of it. I don't think it will come as a surprise. This is term called as fine tuning, which is very common as if you're a data scientist, you will know of it. It is called as prompt delivery. Now, uh, I think prompt delivery is something you might all know. Let's go for fine tuning, for example. Let's say. Okay. So, fine tuning is basically a process where you get a structured data set and then you uh, update your model to work better in a particular set of time. So this is the data you have. It's like you're fine tuning, you're tuning it, like you would tune your car. So, there are challenges here. Very basic challenge, very obvious for this. Uh, you can't do this on a day to day basis. Like when your product actually is changing every minute, there's obviously it's not possible that you can fine tune a model every minute. Data preparation challenges. You can't simply take, let's say, for example, the customer support documents or uh, let's say GitHub issues, list of GitHub issues on a particular repository. You can't that's structured data. You can't simply uh, use that to find your model. That's an, that's a that would be structured data. Data preparation takes a lot of effort. Then cost efficiency. Interestingly, there is uh, we're going to cover something about around embeddings and hygiene. Um, but 
now we have to know this that the cost of using embedding in API or open API is roughly 18 times lesser than the cost of embedding in API. Okay. The goal here may be similar. I mean, again, they have some specific uh, differences that you would possibly go with one of them. But here you can probably understand why finding the unknown will not serve the purpose in most of the cases. Let's see another example that is prompt engineering. Apparently, uh, I mean, there are a lot of reports which say prompt engineering, standard learning, model theory, <laughs> change, that could be gay, dollar, CIA, dollars, something like that. Basically, I'm still yet to come across a cheap prompt officer. Uh, there may be, I don't know. But still, uh, the identity gets your prompt engineering. What is prompt engineering? So, is this is a, a cool thing to put a uh, name to everything that it becomes popular on Twitter and other platforms. The prompt is nothing but it's a very basic thing. Let's say you are simply using uh, chat GPT. So you are what you're entering as the input is also called a prompt. So prompt is again that you are trying to uh, do some trial and error or maybe follow up a set of factors that some of that you want. Okay. Um, now for example, you can, you can I'm sure you would have used it in completing assignments or generating some text code already. But it's seen that not every kind of output, uh, not every kind of input will get the same kind of output. The better you become a the better outcomes be. So let's say in this case, simply input that gives the following to this come data. Once the point, you can see the chat between that. I mean, I'm just taking a screenshot here, so it's easy. It's assuming it's there for internet. Work with my experience, but still, it's easy this kind of problem. But again, this will look like a solution only till a moment where we realize there are few problems. Let's take an example of Netflix. Let's say you are what is here and you are the three pros of Netflix. Um, and it gives a particular answer. It says this, this precise answer is my screenshot. It says you, you know, it does not know the data. data. And you can imagine there's not specific Netflix or any big company. Any company would have any number. And they would want to apply it. Just that they do not know how to go about it. Many times. And interestingly, you will be surprised how a trivial, trivial and non trivial both uh, a minute basic data. But you see, this doesn't work. Second option is that you can copy the entire log or let's say. Uh, data into it. It doesn't work either because I tried this and I tried to copy paste the, the information on the Wikipedia page of Google. And this is what it gave me, and I'm sure you all, all of you would have seen it, right? The message you submit was too long, please zero the condition and submit the result. So, technically, you can't copy the entire thing, and uh, it definitely does not work in the default. So, even on the best practice, it does not solve the problem. Because, uh, and by the way, this thing is also. Related to something called a token limited also. Right? Here, uh, this, this, this particular day when I compiled the file, interestingly, the token limits of models, the context window of uh, models right now, do be things. But still, there are some foundation challenges that we discussed. The token limits, the de tokenizer tokenizers thing that we covered, right? That is precisely for covering this particular bit. Um, so, even if the even if there's the a token limit increase, there are challenges that we First of all, there's a manual work. You have to get data, for example, uh, in this case, there it was about getting numbers from Netflix uh, or, or getting, let's say, is this particular issue resolved by a developer? And that requires the customer support executive to contact particular NNNR to go through 10 different, uh, maybe 100 different GitHub issues and see if, if that is addressed anywhere. Now, doing data as a manual work doesn't feel easy at all. It has limited context, it is unable to save data for future use. But now, building something and Person, a lot of people have the same point. It's obvious, right? And go and go and search it every single time. Go and do it again and again. There's no uh, way to store or expose the data. There's no way to forget the data. Um, let's say you forgetting, you can keep it aside. But yeah, let's say this is very interesting concept of calculation as well. Very interesting. And I think one of the biggest reasons why uh, many companies shy away from using it is in fact, in this case. How many of you know what calculation is for? Okay, so roughly 40% of people. Calculation was interestingly the word of the year of 2023 by Cambridge or someone like that. Uh, it was the following word of the year. Uh, and I was looking into Alice Mixon and got to know. And it did not become the word of the year because it has a, you know, you know, vocabulary related to It was around the context of class and what is. Calculation means that. Elements are sometimes very good at giving you very educated uh, BS kind of answers. It will look like it's very correct. For example, if you ask it what is at some point, like what is an element or what is BDPR, you know, 
team give all like general data uh, predictive rights. Okay, I just create this up. I mean, it does nothing other than make these things up. Okay, and when you are using it, it will all look very, very legit to the point that you will end up using it many times. And until somebody comes back and says that you know it makes no sense, it is absolutely not. Um, so that definitely makes companies very, very um, hesitant to go and apply it because what if you end up putting something into production and then it is showing these errors? There is no real time data access and then there are privacy issues. If the CEO of Netflix is going, is going and copy pasting their entire numbers on chat GPT, then it stays on the platform for I think, 30 days or so if you use the privacy policy. Again, I'm not a legal expert, but you go and check it. That's what it checked the latest, I mean, two days ago. So this issue, and we won't solve for it. So that's where the context of RE comes into picture. RE is precisely what will uh, help you apply elements in any, uh, in most use cases. This is a bit of an idea. The very interesting way of putting across RE, which many products will not appreciate, but it's around cheating. So, uh, how many people remember this particular scene from Mr. Dean, by the way? Show up. Nice. I'm wondering why it's not 100%. So, here, Mr. Dean is trying to, Mr. Dean is a very popular comic actor. He's trying to write down, so he has no clue what it is. He sees that the person next to them has a lot of information, they know what it is. Just decide to, you know what? Uh, he has to give the answer in a particular time limit, so he decides to simply copy paste it. Or copy only what is relevant and just put it on the piece of paper. I don't know if the system would be really as smart as changing or tweaking the language. So let's assume this is the data copy, this is your product type copy. This person. Okay, and uh, you basically need to uh, answer your paper, you need to, you know, to basically answer the prompt that is given by the user. So what you, there, there is something called as a retriever. That is, retrieve what is absolutely necessary given that context and given that. I mean, if there's one option, which is again going to talk to this guy in, in silo and try to listen everything in, uh, in, in its entirety, right? But it's not possible. There's a token element here as well. And it will simply retrieve what is most relevant. All you need is what it will retrieve and paste it. That's what we are talking about. Apparently, not from Mr. Pink. So, RE is nothing but this retrieval of content generation. If you're retrieving information, you're retrieving uh, most pertinent information in a very smart way. We will cover not much in depth, but uh, uh, we will briefly understand this. It will augment this. Uh, it will augment what you have given as an input. For example, if you are a user of Amazon, it will augment it. Will it just try to understand which of the printers are trying to discover? This is the that It will simply Communicate that particular information, retrieve information from uh, the backend from the data corpus to the, the back to the generated API, okay. and then the generation happens. As the end user, you would not understand that okay, where this I mean uh, match will now the same chat GPT kind of application, which is like which, which may be simply using GPT API, is now able to answer the question, and it can do that with the real time data. So you can understand which are the key components. Please ignore the uh, grammatical errors. Yes. So it, it, it has a very, very fundamental building block called as vector embedding. So how many of you know what vector, vector embedding is by the way? Two of us. And how many of you have heard the term vector databases? Okay. So uh, both of them they came and uh, vector databases have been here for a while. They also have been vector embedding. Very common use of the system. Uh, but vector embedding is, you can get this way, like, you know, we just understood in the beginning that these models, they don't understand the they understand numbers. So there has to be a smart way to convert these large corpus of uh, information into numbers and process it in a very efficient manner. Okay. And that efficient manner, that conversion from a textual manner to um, uh, you know, a numerical format is done in a vector format, as we call it. There are other ways as well. That's where if you have heard of something called as a bag of words, CMID, and all those things, they along those directions. But then you understand vectors that's probably a good way. To encode your actual function in a matter in, in, in a way where it can be used smartly. So you basically go and embed your audio, you go and embed your text, you go and embed your videos. And most LLM, I mean most um, major LLM providers, they also, if you look at their API platform, you will see that they have, have they have a lot of APIs. But still, you will see commonly there are two APIs. There is a uh, chat completion API or a generation API, and there is an embedding API. Okay. So that will do precisely the embedding. And this, this diagram is a very good way of understanding how this works. Imagine this entire room is where uh, vectors are 
mean it's in a multi dimensional space. Multi dimensional means basically you are not just talking about x, y, z, three dimensional. You are talking about a lot more dimensions. But this particular diagram is 3D. For you to help you understand how we can possibly represent things in a, a multi dimensional vector space. In this case, if you look at every single dot here, there is uh, a color. Okay. And those colors have a single meaning if you look at it. For example, Terry Green could be similar to green. Okay. And they are not all similar uh, close to them, right? Because in that the, the idea is that they kept close to them. It will be easier to retrieve and find what is the most uh, similar thing to this particular context. Okay. So you simply group them all together in this multi dimensional thing. This has this particular group. You put everything in this particular group. And the different format, and this matrix format is nothing but representation of that position of okay. this vector index. Vector index is basically the story vector. That is what uh, vector embedding is. Um, you can go and search for this. The link below this particular thing is being such a regular document. So now that we have understood vector index, so it has a lot of advantages. You can forget, you can take it adapt to live data stream. For example, let's say uh, you enter that you know what this is uh, our data series, but then tomorrow you want that topic, you know what this is uh, it's not relevant anymore. This product is shared by the company or this issue is solved. Now the element should not be taking and retrieving information from this particular aspect. So vector index needs to forget this. Then it will end up giving that answer. So it can forget it. You can have control over your data and this privacy. Can say, and how is privacy there? Because you can simply keep this particular vector index stored in your uh, own infra. You can store it all again. So that is how it practically helps. And uh, if we go to the code the handle, you can see that you can typically see two kinds of details that I said. One is the embedding API, one is chat completion API. Embedding API will generate the embeddings, and the chat completion API will generate the or the text. Now, let's we understand this very, very basic and high level architecture diagram. Um, it kind of shows how this works. So, let's say you have a data source. The data source can be anything. It can be a PDF, it can be a data source, a good to calculate the answer, it can be anything. So, you have a total data transfer. You buy the data in this diagram. It can be a cloud source, it can be a It can be a post disk data um, It can be a cut off by a selectivity. So we enter that and you can make convert that into a vector index format. We need to basically generate the vector index and show that in the vector index. Initially, before this, before making this happen, what we also try to do is because the data content can be very big at times, chunk that into smaller pieces and then you basically do something like an embedding gameplay to generate the embedding for the particular data that we have. At the same time, what happens is that the am user. Uh, and and let's, let's talk about this particular use case. I'm a customer to put it. Let's explain how it is going to be version 2 for uh, the customers. Very valid question to ask. Right? So, as, as the user asks this particular question, at the same time, even this particular problem is getting converted into a vector format. And we know that when it just converted into a vector format, the data search becomes much more easier. And similarly, search and all these things are related. And that's how we retrieve it. So, there will be a retrieval mechanism. There will be an algorithm that works. That will retrieve the most relevant information and then it will simply ingest that from the back end to the chat function data. For example, this is what a product release uh, two point twenty three is and what it does to the customer. And then it will simply give the output in a time to like it. So as the as the as the end user they can simply get an output, but it is continuously updated and learned. So very a uh, small uh I took of the AK of five five and simply see how it is particularly working. Um, let's take this particular example like this, and then we go back. So, this is just a GI. Let's say you want to build a discount tracker app, right? The example of that I'm talking about. So, here you see it is there are according to both uh, PDFs and text. Uh, sorry, there's an API, reinforcing API is a very popular API, and then there's CSC. Why is CSC just to show that it was okay? Uh, and then you simply ask, give me the product with a discount, and it will end up giving you know, the private list. And what it is doing is basically, first of all, it is uh, it is basically ingesting the data, first of all. Uh, so the data sources are uh, transformed into structured documents. That's what that is what happens. Then you generate the embeddings in the second step. Generate the embeddings, then you create the index. Uh, interestingly, uh, with something like pathway, you can generate the vector index within the program library, which is called 
So if you're using something like Lavender, Lanfay, or even if you're using Pathway uh, Zone as you know, uh, tool, then in that case, you won't have to use a replicate database because it pretty much works in the program. But if the idea that becomes a bit, a bit more easier to implement, uh, for companies, it means that you don't have to work with more vendors. And uh, at the same time, what you also do is you simply um, you, you take the query and then you generate the embedding for the query as well. And then you basically generate the responses with the help of embedded query and the index that you have. And the response will generate something else. So, uh, and an interesting way to look at it, by the way, a very important small element that I would draw your attention to is code is, code is the That is how, in the case of something like pathway, you specify whether the code is going to batch. The batch is where you are uh, making batches of data. For example, you can have data, you can make this thing happen in every five minutes, every 15, 20 minutes, or you can have it in real time. Whenever change is happening, you can be in real time. So, I mean, this is kind of very, uh, in terms of the thing that you can do with. We have cleaning plus uh, or I work in fact. The long list, uh, a couple of things I would possibly draw attention to is now with the help of RNA, you can also validate documents and you can significantly access the idea of uh, annotation. How? Uh, we cannot stop in a, a GPT kind of thing from hallucinating, but when you register the information, you can just totally say that you know what information is coming from this particular document. Data now the end user can now go and verify it. The application becomes much more trustworthy. You can have these in a privacy preserving manner. Uh, you can kind of connect a lot of data solutions that you want to talk about. And the very interesting thing that we published yesterday, I have not got a lot of time to go through it, but something called an active bar engine for which you can reduce the cost of track uh, to one port without affecting the efficiency at all. Okay, so and the, 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 the last example is very easy one, and we see a lot of different developers from India build applications like this. You can simply have an analytical application which understands the new set, so three data types. You can spot uh, fraud detection for data of the prototype. You can go travel to the By the way, there are companies that are using, um, uh, using pathway in production for this particular kind of application. Let's say you are, let's, let's take this example. Um, so, India doesn't have spent so often, our Indian data is fortunately very good. But let's say uh, that you are, you are very dependent on public transport, transport in a city like, let's say, Berlin. And uh, the schedule of buses is not really can change. If something happens, it can change. Now, you should be able to ask that app that, okay, where is my bus arriving? And you can see there has been uh, a detour that it has taken. Now, we will arrive in the So, those kind of information you can deliver to the end user. One interesting example that uh, I personally saw, uh, I that was made by a group of students from the industry, that was uh, they basically built an application where they said that, okay, when there's a calamity, this application can simply uh, okay, when there's a calamity and the user, you're not really asking that you can tell you what you're simply running. But if you are the administration, then you might be, you can use some build drive. So it will, there are existing data from the maps, there are existing, there are existing uh, weather's data, there are existing uh, a few more other real time information. And simply helping those administrative folks to understand this can be the best solution that can be given to this particular user, given where they put it. Those kind of smart things you can do and you can solve this particular problem. This small line of code that we saw here is pretty much more or less how you would make it happen. Yeah, a, a few key takeaways as I'm wrapping this is uh, accuracy for is not the same as accuracy for LLMs. It's very important to understand this. Um, when you talk about um, LLMs, right? Um, when you talk about LLMs and hallucination, you cannot never ever take hallucination zero. Okay? There's no way to make it happen. But when it comes to retrieving most accurate information, you can make it more accurate. For example, you can use something like a combination of vectors or that is covered, right? Something like graphs and something like semantic search, all in parallel, to retrieve the most relevant information. That is something that uh, we have seen pretty much, we have five passes the right in a lot of these cases. Second, reactivity of LLM operations is very important. Now, reactivity can be in multiple contexts, it can have a lot of things. But what we say is that, let's see this example, right, where you are uh, serving customers across the world and you have a batch process. It's basically running every five minutes. Okay. And what happens is, let's say, uh, the, the last one is supposed to run at 12, 12 uh, p.m. And you did something around 11 to the night in search for it. Okay. At the moment you retrieve the information, the next second it is changed now because the batch job is not at 10 hours. Because the next batch job will run after 20 minutes or after 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. But the information, the kind of numbers that it is giving or the information that is completely different. 
in a lot of cases that can create a massive problem. So reactivity is pretty much important. That's where screening becomes slightly crucial in these cases. And the last one is something that I uh, put in is in that it's very important for us uh, young developers or students to understand uh, that it doesn't necessarily have to be a very absolutely mind-blowing application on day zero. Many times simplicity can also solve a lot of problems. I think a lot of companies, a lot of big techs are simply very uh, the likes of the companies and the things that they own to, to make very basic arrangement application. Okay. Um, so just this keep uh, problem solving in mind is right about this. is an interesting read that um, yeah, this yeah, this is an interesting read. So the one that is talking about the adaptive IT of parenting has gotten a few bit trouble looking at the Traction since yesterday. I have been traveling since yesterday, so I could not read it. But you can simply scan this QR code, you can use it to go to the shop, you can go and do it. Um, so that's around RG, that is what we'll be learning right now. And a very quick summary of the bootcamp that we are conducting um, with folks at IDD with their club. Um, this bootcamp is around RG primarily. Okay. Uh, we'll be starting from very basic things. Taking the project and their own application. We have uh, this, I mean, uh, technically, this particular slide does not do justice to all the kind of work where it has happened. There are a lot more people who have made it happen. Um, but still, I have to put some faces because that works inside the paradigm. So, just a few we have uh, Jan Chorus to the city of Park, Radiant Moskowski, who is um, chief product officer. He co founded something called Scotch. You can do something like Hacker or Portia, which we use online in the uh, Scotch for a long period of time. It was Kind of promoting company to put in platform. He did his PhD at 20 kind of a project kind of person. Yeah. Uh, then there's Anup who is with XSA and now he's also devoted to market. So I mean, like, he was a coach and he was a problem in that. One of the company who said problems for the finals of coach. That's how I got to it. And he's a lead software engineer, he has been there, so he's a young kid with Google of Russia. The reason I'm going to go to the next Good in it. Internally, yeah, most of the folks in that part are uh, that's very similar permanent for the panels, along with uh, PhD in that research. Okay. Um, and thing that we'll be covering in this particular context is this definitely work I must mention is um we thought it happened for the theater it's a tech account to the next um in this 3D bootcamp, we'll be covering introduction to LMS generative AI. We'll be covering into uh, covering word vectors, vector algorithms, how it works. Then we jump into prompt engineering by prompt engineering because we can know the basic ways like going learning English. You can't become an expert in English just by a course. Right? And practically enough, practically enough, uh, even this content of prompt engineering is important about documentation and improving competency. But we will try to communicate those basic things. Then we cover local limits so that we can build a foundation for that. You understand how I am implemented local demands that you can go and solve by smart technology. And then we do some other development. Mandatory activity will be to build your deposit. A uh, very basic thing for me to mention is that it's absolutely 100 percent free. There is no kind of cost associated with it. Um, and uh, it's something that we do as we love to benefit communities. Uh, there's nothing that Adrian put across by look of that. Uh, do we believe that the changes of tomorrow are not in the dogs? Are not in the board, but in the dogs. It's kind of a witness to go and empower them. That's what we're trying to do with this issue. Um, there are kind of things that we'll be giving away like Xbox controller, speaker, t shirts, and all. So, those things you can pretty much they are for that. They're just way for us to get motivated to push ourselves with something that surprises us. Thank you for getting me out and being so patient. And I wish you the time. So guys, we are going to now have a short quiz. So there will be two rounds of this quiz, one after this talk. And there will be another round of this after the talk of the last talk. Scan this QR code, the meeting. We have a group also. 
Cycles we have passed very fast, and the people are going to ask them faster to get more. Now let's see the Harvin and Jordan. I think the sixteen on the table. It's not good. Not loading. And for the prices, we'll be having a gaming mouse. Two to bigger than the laptop. Longer many other could be. Not loading. I didn't see eighty nine. That is the mobile data that has been working. Okay. <laughs> 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 What is the primary advantage of distributed augmented generation application? We have thirty six. Also, can you see the options on your screens? Yeah, 
आंसर का फ्लिपकार्ट पहले लेंगे तो धनलिप्स का पहले लेंगे
So I hope uh, not how many Uh, and also we can keep things inside. So we 
in Windows now if you have any questions or uh, if you don't understand anything. So that's where the show ends. How many of us are first year students? Okay, second year, third year, and fourth year, and post grad, and now. Okay. Okay. So we have a uh, majority of us here. Uh, so hopefully there is something. So we will not be able to do any deep dive. What we will try to do is we will try to look at the history of the city. So we will look at two different histories on the our constant threat of people who are and fast. So we'll see how what we have been doing since sixteen years and then we will look at what the data is from sixteen years and then around two thousand both of these histories sort of collided into a beautiful marriage and then came out the stream of the city. So we will look at these two histories and see how we collide. Okay, so let's first look at the brief history of Arjuna. So again, please feel free to stop because uh, yeah, I would love that you can understand and appreciate. So basically, let's go back to the 1960s, right? Uh, we probably most of us are not even born, but <laughs> so when they wanted to let's say you have a program. You want to make it faster. That's what we want to do. So one thing that really worked is I didn't buy a new computer. It's because whatever program I have, I'm going to anyways run faster because the CPU is getting more and more power. Right? So there is a very popular move from uh, that some of us may have heard that every couple of years three CPU block rates are going bad. So we are able to pack. So on this graph, on the x-axis, we are seeing that on the y-axis, we are seeing that clock rate is getting better. Right? So clock rate directly determines the number of instructions that the CPU is able to send. Right? So we see that even if I have the same program, the students are running on a new CPU, it's running faster. So uh, so things are good. We don't have to do any software. Or another thing uh, that came out in this era was optimization methods. Like, so I didn't want to write this because the thing can be may not be optimal. So I would like to write it up and then to program for C because these came out in the 60s and 80s. So by the time of around late 80s, the language that these are programming these compilers are making. Are programs that is for us. We don't have to go on. We still want to use Python. Mm -hmm. A lot of heavy-duty work is also done. So then let's come to the next decade. Right? So now we are in the 80s to 90s. So around this point, uh, people started realizing that this exponential growth, like this. These clock speeds that CPUs will get, keep on getting faster. This is not a good thing. They then turn from their predictions with that. Indeed, in the early 2000s, uh, these clock speeds stopped growing. Right? And at that point, we had to have multiple. Right? Now we have multiple CPUs within the same machine. So the next trick that we need to do is if I want to make my uh, program run faster, I need to somehow utilize multiple things. Right? So, from this realization, we got a new. So, one programming company we got right? that instead of my program, <laughs> one issue, I will split my program to multiple CPUs. Right? And the assumption is these CPUs all have common. So, if one Part of the 
So we will look at things at a very high level. So I mean, just to learn today, these men like five to seven lectures, programming and all that. So what we are trying to do is do more of a breadth and breadth first. But So the the crisis is the frequency of the so what I have now is the different series and now I have to come up with some programming models where I can program in this Okay, so one of the things that I have a problem that CPUs can raise. So the other approach that I'm going to implement is the this part. That now only CPUs will have their own area of memory. So they will not directly like And these CPUs will show up with the different and the open entry became an Right. So in the 80s and 90s, we realized this scaling is not going to work for us. We need to come up with some new programming models and then some programming with the CPU. Right. But our hunger for faster programming and larger inputs is not stopping, obviously. Right. So, any thoughts what we can do? We have these programming models. So, what do we do? I didn't want to move on to this. I can just spend that. Okay, so the question is I want to go even faster. My machine has two CPUs. I have figured out a way of how to program. But I want to go even faster. Yeah, monthly threading we have figured out. We have figured out how to program two CPUs. <laughs> So makes the new faster that is only going, but it is growing now. It is uh, we were not able to add more But of course, a lot of things are changing. This is a very very coarse uh, painting this story with a very coarse. CPUs are indeed getting faster. With lot of the yeah. distribution the or the right. okay. cool. So distribution comes later. The more obvious idea is that the right. so I two codes and uh, but I can apply given and a lot of data to work on the entire spectrum which is used. Right. So it's not going to fit into my two codes. Right. So instead I'm going to Build a supercomputer and they have uh, made two thousands of codes inside it. Right? And I already know how to program and do CPUs. But the problem is supercomputers are they very really expensive. <laughs> and uh, if let's say I want to further increase my computing power, I need to potentially buy a new supercomputer. Right? So I have to throw this million dollar supercomputer. Which has let's say downtime of hours if not days. So I have to completely go with this my problem size is also. So this is one approach. I can be nineties so a lot of People started thinking the fastest way to build this computer. It is competition to build the fastest computer. Right? 
but but of course it is all of these problems. But at the time we thought we had a But the other crazy idea that came out is instead of it's an idea that floating will not reduce to So the other crazy idea that came out is instead of using a super to just build a Is let's say if I want to upgrade if my process is even bigger, I need to buy a new process. So I need to make a million or investment, just make a thousand to invest to get the benefit. And if my dollar size goes further, I can buy two more. Okay. So it's very elastic in terms of scaling. Right? And we are keep adding more and more users into this network. Okay. So it's very, very nice. And this uh, was pioneered by Google. Uh, so this is how Google tested with the commodity machines, desktops, just uh, connected together. Right? In 1999, we got every computer. So and does not really need a keyboard and so on. So we started. But but this is not related. Programming clusters is turned out to be quite not related. Because the problem with the cluster is let's say one computer has three years. So or maybe even five years. So I have my laptops, it's this pattern every five years. I need my own this. Okay, no worries. But when I put thousands of computers, Something is crashing on the time. So, in this example, you said that one computer has been created. If I put many thousands of computers in the system, then we are crashing every day. Right? Managing this crash is itself a huge challenge. Primary challenge is this crash. Right? So, what I really want, so basically, I hope you are getting the drift, but what we are trying to see is as we are the the hardware that is pulse is changing, the throughput is changing. Right? So initially we went from assembly to hardware uh, related this, then we went to creating and open right? and now we are changing. Right? So turns out the uh, with something like open and we can contribute and import. So part of my program is coming here, part of my program is coming there, and then this guy just disappears. The moment that the power came in, the CPU is over, heated, it's gone. And now this is trying to send some data, but there is no way to receive it. So the program is stuck. It's very tricky problem. And uh, so we are calling it 2000, but in the 1980s, people started getting it. And people were trying to build this program. They even deal with ports. They got a lot of effort into moving a multi threaded program directly to a cluster by mapping individual threads to different computers, etc. But it just completely did not work. <laughs> they were effort they distributed to uh, But this ports is a really, really tricky issue to solve. So, how many of us understand the challenge at this point? Uh, intuitively, at least. Okay. So, the idea is very simple. It's like four of us who are trying to understand this event. Right? And I ask you that by going to the next quiz. And then you never show up. <laughs> so, we are pretty stuck. I gave you, or someone gave us. Right. So what we want is the show must go on, even though some people are not right? even though some people are energy pretty difficult problem. So any thoughts? I just from the technology and how we can support this. Yeah. 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 Ye
So one approach is I am going to ask everything into empty. So let's say two of you. Why don't two of you design this? But that wasted effort. If both of them were not disappearing, then we sort of then we sort of wasted the what if we assign priority? Uh, so priority is not the issue here. What we want is we want everything to be done. I let's say there was some for loop that was running. I cannot say that this was low priority for loop. We want every part of the project. And the tricky part is people can disappear the thing. Very good. Very good. So very intuitive. It took us twenty years to do it. With the So Google knows this. So one machine is very slow for some reason. 
So these are all the things that programmer does not does not have to worry. They just write like this and then the code. Now it's the not but how we're going to change it. Extremely difficult. So this idea really took off. Obviously, uh, we now see data centers with many thousands to one million machines within a single data center. This is a new technical way of scaling, putting faster inside and more computers. Supercomputers still exist in some other communities where you cannot express programs in these kind of directions. But currently in web scale Right, so this is what I wanted to say about faster processing. Okay, so uh, we are going from 70s to 2000s. We, uh, so the nature of the hardware is changing. So we are going from, so initially we moved to a higher level integration to C and Porta. Then we added the capabilities of the next multiple sets to then part of the first program is the CPU. Then we want to program. So 2000, we put oh, any questions. Huh? Yeah, so the use was doing this addition. So Matt is saying, Matt is putting, saying that I thought we are fine. We thought hard. And then after all the results, or the years are together. Yeah. Uh, after all the years are together, reduce is saying, I want to do this one but So reduce it is doing this one. Okay. So you might want to multiply. Okay, any other questions? So the question is, we want to know what is going on. So so far we are at two. Cool. So this is one side of the story. Our objective desire to go faster on bigger and bigger things. So much better we came on with the programming one. Then the other side of the story is data management. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, when computers started, they will be used for the same way. They will be used for these kind of things. But uh, in the 60s and 70s, they started appearing in businesses. So businesses, so personal computing is not the desktop is not but businesses are able to do and uh, since businesses are able to code computers, businesses have business ways. Accounts, banks may have accounts and nothing. These kind of things. So obviously, what we want to figure out is how to move all of this data into a computer. We want to make use of this data. Okay. So again, during our meeting, came on describing how to build this is what we all know in the businesses. Okay, so God was an idea when uh, we did this. So IBM uh, built system R. It's a significant databases. It introduced the declarative program. Okay, so SQL grew to begin. So the idea of SQL is quite okay, So the idea of SQL is we want to make databases. But we don't want people to learn how to do it. So in SQL, you say what you want. You don't say what you want. Whereas in C and Python, we have to tell step by step computers and do this and do this. So we don't want to do that. So in SQL, we have to say what we want. So we are saying, like, I want you to give me all the customers. I want you to give me the last age where their country is not UK. 
and I want you to order the transcript. Okay, so I am not telling, I am not writing for those things. Doing all these things, I'm just literally telling the data. This is what it is. And the data data is supposed to be the power function. So data is who will figure out how to compile this SQL and do some things to your using the numbers. So this is what data data is. So then in 1990s, this WW is happening. Uh, clearly, databases become the factor of social technology for websites. Everything is modern, big size data. So, for example, this is a space. So, they might have a table for stories and they have a user and they have a friends and they have a friends. So, I'm not going to be using it. It's some way of keeping the data. And especially, if I say this, you will hopefully learn this. But one of the things that became interesting in databases was this idea right? yeah. that uh, so in databases, in, uh, so you can take this sequence query and you can say this is now so that now we can use this view is not a view. This view is not a view. So here you are saying this front page is this particular. Every time I use it, open it to video this video, I just create this view. So views became interesting. So now I need to change. So there are two new problems up here in the two thousands. One is the idea of incremental view index. That let's say I gave a board to a story, so immediately the front page view should be. So if the user reloads, I can want to read from this report for the update. So whenever some updates are showing up into the page, the output should automatically update. So this incremental view index uh, problem here. And the other problem here of stream processing, which are actually related problems. So in stream processing, the problem is in our regular databases are data to standard. Data to standard. When I do a query, I will do when it is this table and give down. But now in streaming, the table is constant. The data is constantly shown up. And uh, the query could be a standing query. And you want to continuously give out for this question So both of them are uh, right, so the idea is I had this SQL query, and this was my input table, and this was my output table. So that the new data shows up. The new data shows up. I want to increment the update. I don't want to read this idea. Good. Any questions? Yeah. Okay, so this is what things look like, right? So in the data management computer. Uh, on the data management side, we have figured out this. We have figured out the SQL language. So, note that SQL language is a declarative language where the user is not saying how to do it, just what to do. And the database figures out how to do it. Our databases become storage based on websites, and there is incremental view in stream So, then database figures see that, okay, when we use this command. So if you Google map reduce in university, so like the University of Washington data is essentially I mean the systems people are calling map reduce essentially, but database people are saying we have been declaring this for years. Why are they reinventing this? So what they do is quickly there are plenty of things. Extensions of user dependent. Okay, so, this is again the same word count query. So, scope is a data command. Uh, exactly the same word count query. Uh, there is a mapper in this data uh, inside the SQL query. And it provides all the categories that the service provides. In addition, it has a prediction function. The optimizer can optimize the query much better than the So, there is a 
to run ML models. Okay, so they, I mean, you get some point. <laughs> There's like Google Home, you get some point. And then those to the whole collection of ML models to so, all of these things in the stream. So we are back. So I will just uh, share it. So basically, we should feel excited about the day that we are and about this workshop. We are going to learn something that is extremely necessary in the industry. Uh, and it's probably going to dominate this area at least in this lecture. Uh, so I also, I'm sure we'll learn more about partnership in the next I just want to show you some of my little glimpses of some. So one thing we are working on is uh, streaming video verification. And there is some policeman who wrote a query that I want to get this much taller car or someone must get nabbed or something. And policeman obviously does not know how to code ML models and train ML models. So we want to stick with the declarative program. So they can write the video query that they give me the camera, maybe I can find it in license plate number and let me try to something in the register. And the goal is we will figure out till the end of the day and now we will not start. And hopefully the output is the video query. So this is one thing that we uh, another thing that we are working on, and this is the last thing, is uh, is when you have this ML based pipeline. So here we have videos coming in. And this is detecting objects in ML. That we want to keep. And for that, for the those truck mounting boxes, I identify the instructions. I use OCI to. And I also have some vehicle registration to say that this truck is controlled. So after joining, I basically want to calculate how many diesel trucks are and how many electric trucks are passing the distance to inform policy making for us. Right, so it turns out actually these models are like these models can and so we are also exploring some new tools on how we can, we can fix these mistakes on the track to improve this in the so, so that's about it. Uh, I hope uh, that some of this was useful. So, if you please log in back to the old quiz, they have the same link and the same journey for us. We will be continuing with you. So, let me know if you are ready to start. Also, 
and it is in the material included six times seven to seven nine times. This was a multi com. So it is the So let's start with the first question. This might be a little harder than the last one. So with all the following the key which involves the three interesting thing of that passive thing. Now, let's see the answer. This real time real time test for the answer. So, this is the real code now. It's a pretty good thing, of course. So, case is pretty good. I don't know. What is Insta? I think many people have heard of Insta, so let's see what it is. So, is it designed for multimodal tasks? Is it combining multiple elements to improve performance? Is it hitting elements on Insta that have a data source? Or is it just a variant of a customer aspect? Try to be specific to your responses in this question. Okay, so it's not the format for the task, it's, it's not the mixture of the task and the task. So, multimodality means you have to travel the input source, like you can take images or videos or audio. But here the multiple data means you have multiple experts of different data. Let's see the data for the game. Okay, I think I'm going to find it in this one there. So, what is in context present in the context of the In this vector equation, king minus man plus one equal to three. What will be the protection distance? Answer this part. So, this is the vector and the vector embedding this tab using the this one for the fast vector. I 
So, in this context of early cluster programming, what is the imaginative model? Because the model is internet connectivity, hardware upgrades, or other things. This, this is order. What is the primary role of a tokenizer? Is it encryption or breaking down suggestions, testing errors, or incremental predicts work? I think people are getting faster and faster responses. It is for breaking down suggestions in your version of the What is the advantage of the use of cluster in the two thousands of the bus supercomputer? So this question is basically why it should be distributed after the future including this is the So those are the energy consumption, easier languages, elastic stability, or the energy way. So this is the graphic celebrity by adding more What is not stated as an advantage for using RAS for to differentiate the system? Minimizing hallucination, regulation, accessibility, automatic summarization of data sources, human like discussing and editing for. I need you to answer the not. This was a close call. So actually, that can automatically summarize data source. This is not going to be the case. So, from applied decision, we have a Was it that during the war, the editing of the activity of the other? Let's 
Let's see who got this time. He actually put the Google API as the one. So yes, this is for it. OpenMP is also for fashion, but it's for GPU. Water, this was a point of this two values in part. Yes, the right field is all the particles in the world. Is that even a question? So let's do something different. What are the main advancements that happened in the learning program in the past 15 and 15 years? 50 was the stress of a little bit. Why do you pass the internet? Reading the answer from the test, optimizing the compiler, or the thing to class by six. Yes, this is off by the compiler. I want to know which eight people had answered the thing to cut the questions in the Now we have the last question. Is anyone ready? How does part of the high frequency of complex compression of it? Performing all computations in real time, if you can contrast with the sequential, if you can send it to the company, or if you can for detection. This is the fastest sound. <laughs> Last question, please. But the answer is proving that this is negative. Now let's go to the leader code. The winner is here, Bob and Monish Kumar. So can we have other questions? Who is Bob? Who is Monish Kumar? Thank you. 
फादर फर्स्ट टाइम में है कृतिका शर्मा उसे के जी स्टूडेंट है एंड फादर फर्स्ट टाइम में है कि मेरे सारे छोटे स्पीकर Let's get to the next one. 